start here tonight with jury selection in the deadliest mass shooting ever to go on trial. The 12 member panel will decide if Nicholas Cruz should be executed or get life in prison. Cruz already pled guilty to the 2018 murders of 17 people at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. Many of them kids. Court officials say 1500 jury candidates could be screened over the next several weeks. Newsy national correspondent Haley Bull is following this case and Haley, it's taken uh, more than four years to get to this point. It's going to take a little longer for those families of the victims to see justice. Paul, that's exactly right. And the families I have spoken with say they have expected this. They know this is going to be a long process. And top of mind inside the courthouse today are those 17 lives lost. Some of the family members of the victims are inside the courtroom today. Others plan to be here uh, for certain days throughout this process. Now, what the jury uh, will consider is whether the punishment for the murders of those students and staff is death or life in prison without parole. And in Florida, that must be a unanimous jury to recommend uh, a death sentence. But we are still far away from seating a jury. At this point, the first part we are in is is jury selection, which could take weeks, if not well over a month. It is divided into phases because of the length of this case. It could take potentially up to six months now. So a big part of this first phase is figuring out who can commit the length of time without hardship or extreme inconvenience. Uh, this afternoon, jur potential jurors talked a lot about the impact on jobs, income, people, uh, they are caregivers for, as well as other commitments like vacation. As we move forward, legal experts explain we may hear more questions trying to determine any set views, ability to listen and follow the law, as well as discussion about pretrial publicity. Now, throughout this, some family members of victims we have talked to say they want to make sure people keep the focus on the 17 victims. Again, some are here to witness the process, to represent their loved ones. We spoke with the parents of Luke Hoyer ahead of today. Take a listen. He killed 17 people for the thrill of it. And ever since that day, his rights have taken priority. He's had the opportunity to negotiate for his life where none of our kid, none of the other people that were killed had any opportunity to negotiate for their lives. I just think people need to keep in mind that we need a little fairness here, that the victims are Luke and the 16 others that were killed, the 17 that were injured. Now, once a jury is seated, part of the testimony they will hear will likely include victim impact statements. Leading up to this, there's been a lot of back and forth between the state and defense team. Part of that including challenges from the defense over how victim impact statements can be presented, challenging the state statutes on the death penalty, as well as what evidence can be brought forth in court. Many of those motions, all of those listed just now, have been unsuccessful so far, Paul. Yeah, Haley, four long years for those parents and the victims' families, and it's uh, the hardest part still to come. This is really the beginning. Once we get past jury selection, what will those jurors actually have to consider? Well, what, this, what we're going to see is going to be a trial, essentially. So the state is going to try to prove aggravating factors. For example, whether the crimes were committed in a cold, calculated, premeditated manner, or that the crimes were especially atrocious and cruel. On the flip side of that, the defense is going to argue for considerations of mitigating factors. Court filings show uh, that they're likely to use expert testimony on mental mitigation. Then what the jury is going to need to weigh is is whether at least one aggravating factor has been proven beyond reasonable doubt and whether those factors outweigh any mitigating circumstances in order to recommend the death penalty. Uh, if they are to recommend the death penalty, the judge could deviate from that sentence. If they recommend life in prison without parole, the judge cannot deviate from that recommendation, Paul. 1,500 jurors got to get it down to 12 and a long way to go. Thank you, Haley. We'll be following along very closely. All right.